Oh, what's going on, everybody? And as you can see, we here on the X Men '97 uh, episode, uh, season one, episode five. Remember it, and remember it, you shall, because who, who, um, wow, just wow. I mean, bro. This episode right here, my God, man, this was crazy. I mean, it was crazy, and it actually, uh, for it was actually foreshadowed because we seen this when Madeline and Pryor was like in that like she it, when she had like went she was like in her mind and she saw all these different things, and she even saw like this ghastly, ghostly figure said. I'm like, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry. And, or, or, you know, something like that. And this was foreshadowed. This all, everything she saw was not actually just weird visions, but it was actually vision, distorted visions of the future. Um, but what's, what is remember it? Remember it uh, involves the team members of us, the team members of X Men, they hit Genosa as the UN as UN honorees while a president risks exposing the team's dirty laundry. Um, in the sense of dirty laundry, there's two things that's happening here. Genosa is being honored. The the, the team members that goes to goes to Genosa are Gambit, Rogue, and Magneto. And they meet uh, 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 Nightcrawler there. Nightcrawler's already there. Uh, while we see some, cat where we get cameos from different mutants of the comic book series uh, at Genosha. We get the Morlocks. You know, we get all that, right? But the thing is, this other side to it. While they're at Genosha, because I think the, the UN is going to make Genosha officially a part of the United States, um, continuing to usher this era of peace in. Um, there's also an expose being done on the X-Men uh, by this newscaster who I think who I, I found out in the comics uh, has a relationship with Beast. So uh, Beast and her interaction was special because Beast actually likes this woman and so and so forth. But the interview don't go as quiet as, as you know, okay, as she would probably hope. As once she gets the Cyclops, uh, it kind of gets a little murky for them. Uh, Jean uh, also has a moment where she's... Uh, where she like has this like this Moses like moment where she she got the the little lake on by the mansion just parted and she used like these spear water spears to try to focus her memory to try to figure out what memories are hers or what memories are Madeline's because apparently I guess Madeline and her mind are linked so she can't she can't discern what's her memories and what's Madeline's memories. Uh, she would, uh, Logan would come to check on her, and they would have a little moment where Logan, Logan kind of gets what he wanted, but he has to be the good guy and be like, "Nah, it's, it's always supposed to be you and uh, and Big Boy Scout over there." I need you. He's like, "I know that. I need you to go over there and talk to him." And I'm just like, "Dang, Logan knows he wanted. That's what he always wanted from Jay, but." He knows that is she's meant to be with Cyclops, but that was kind of like the side story. Now the main story, the main story over in Genosha is that it's just this big affair. Uh, the X Men are seen as heralds and heroes. Uh, they're welcome with open arms, and there's this like gala and party where it's going to be announced that. They are being, like I said earlier, the, the Genosa is being accepted as a nation <clears throat> and a uh, state or a nation in the U.S. And they're going over things like the pop. We get the original uh, Jane Grey actor back again. It's that one lady. Um, 
and she basically uh i wouldn't say <clears throat> i wish you know what i wish instead of having the original jane gray actress voice actress as this lady i wish they would have did like they would have had like the new voice actress for Jean Grey being the Marilyn Prior Jean, while the original Jean Grey at voice actress is the original Jean. That way you can tell the difference between the two. Cause you can tell that the one Jean is is the new voice actress while the original is the actual original Jean. Um, one thing I need to point out since I'm talking about Jean here, uh, or the at least the Marilyn Prior Jean, is that uh, in the intro, that uh Jean Grey, uh when they you know when they do Jean Gray's part, she's back to being the is back to being how the original Jean Gray would look to so that the difference between both Jean Gray and uh Madeline is that Jean and Madeline likes to wear their hair different styles. Madeline likes to wear her hair down while Jean likes to tie her hair up and a ponytail. Um and this is the this is how you could tell the difference between Marilyn and Jean. Uh, there is it is a moment where these two where the side story and this story intersect because of Jean, because she explains how her and Cyclops have like this where this uh, this psychological rapport where they she had used that she would use her mind to just talk with Cyclops and see and, you know they would just talk to each other where they can't be interrupted because it's in her it's in their minds. And she will catch Madeline uh, doing this with Cyclops, which caused Jean and Cyclops to get into an argument. Um, it's, I won't I won't say how that argument went, but trust me, you would like to see it because it was it was a good uh, it was a bad argument, but it was good. You know, it was very entertaining. Um, but we get to the 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 big oh my god moment. The moment I was like. So apparently during this guy, Madeline Pryor is there. She's uh she's she's one of the many uh console like people like the head the, that's gonna be helping to ease it because people are still uneasy about Matt Nito. So Rogue and others are gonna be there to make it more easier to deal with for the humans to deal with that. Matt Nito is gonna be one of the people in charge of this new you know, combined peace. And something happens. For some reason, Cable is back. And he's telling people there's fireworks going off and he's telling people to turn off the fireworks, turn off the music and get out of here and evacuate now. And you see why. Because in the distance, along with the fireworks, you see something that don't belong. And it's something that's going off and they probably, they can hear it but they think it's part of the fireworks, but it's actually not. It's not actual fireworks. It's green explosions, and and uh, Cyclops, um, not Cyclops, but uh, Cable finds Madeline Pryor because she and she hits it. She gets hits with a psychic, um, with like this psychic attack, which is just her. Which I think they said people said, which is her like remembering something, and she I think she was remembering. That this is what she saw in that weird, incohesive memory of the future. And she actually runs into Cable, which you find out that it was actually Cable that she was seeing in that discombobulated vision that was saying, I'm sorry, Mom. Because it was Cable was the one who he repeated those same lines that he, he tells her that they she need they need to evacuate they need to leave now he's coming and she's like who's coming and she realized cable is her son and uh which is madden and prior and she she's like you're my son and he's and that's why he says i'm sorry ma i'm sorry because his time thing um kicks in which is sucking him back into the future which means he he ran out of time and she was trying to figure out sorry about what and then everything lights up green and Boom. Turns out they're being attacked. They're being attacked by this monstrosity got three-headed Godzilla like Sentinel. Uh who is uh, who is attacking and killing mutants. Uh 
uh, Gene and Matt Nito are seen as Omega threat level uh, mutants, as they should. Uh, man, and I, this episode from this point on, I can't really get into it because I don't want to spoil it. But man, it gets bad. It gets real bad. And the reason why the episode is called Remember It, because it's a line spoken by Gambit on multiple in the original series and in this episode here. And it's a line, it's one of the last, it's the last line spoken by Gambit when fighting the Sentinel. And if you've seen the episode, you know why it's his last line, at least for now. Uh, there's an interesting side story between Rogue and Gambit where Rogue comes to her decision about who she want to be with. This was a good episode, man. I mean, wow. I can't wait to next week because I don't know. I thought this was going to be like the, the the second part to that story with Storm. And we got like a whole different episode. And I'm just like, holy crap. Wow. Okay. So far, X-Men 97 has been good. The, the voice acting was good. The storyline here was good. It's part of the comments as they uh drawn from. Man, this is good. I enjoyed it. I really did. I have nothing bad to say about it. This was good. This was good. Um, I'm going to give this episode... I'm going to give it that... I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10. Big us because this was good. This was real good. I enjoyed it. Like, it... it, 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 it man... I just, I don't understand. Like, I just needed to know more about why Cable was there. But maybe we're going to figure out it eventually. But as I, as I always like to say. If you want to support the channel, all I got to do is hit those buttons. And as always, hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. But don't go anywhere because... I got that reaction from Mr. Baller coming up next. And be on the lookout for the Wrestling Pit Podcast's uh, SmackDown review. So, peace.